kind of thought I might take a walk out on the ice and uh, with the spot here and uh, see how the ice is doing. But doesn't look like it's doing too good. This area right here is the river channel. It's a very slow moving river. It's almost just a creek actually. Uh, very slow flowing. But it will open up in the winter time whenever we get a, a thaw or something. And usually I can judge by how far uh, how far downstream this open water goes as to whether the big water is going to be safe but uh, this year it's a little odd so I think I'm going to have to walk around certainly there's no good ice here I mean if you look up that way near the dam there's some ice but I wouldn't think that would be safe it would be very risky because uh, once that river channel gets down that way it kind of just meanders wherever it decides to meander on any given day and it's really hard to judge where uh, safe ice would be so I'm gonna head on over to the bigger part of the lake on the other side of the freeway here and uh, and see if it's any good because this certainly is no good for ice fishing We still have ducks swimming around in it. Quite a few ducks actually. But no ice. There's some skim ice. I'll head over to the other side and see what it looks like. civilization or whatever but it's one of the best fishing lakes around uh, unfortunately if you can see out there when that river channel flows it's still wide open water uh, even beyond the river channel it's open water this area gets a lot of wind so it's hard for it to freeze up anyway because the wind keeps the water churned up if you look off in the distance over there, there's a, a wide bay that kind of goes back. And there's a big hill and it's quite sheltered from the wind and it's sheltered from the sun somewhat too. So I'm going to head all the way over there and uh, check that ice and see how it is. We're going to take an opportunity to uh, show you what unsafe ice looks like or what can make an unsafe situation. If you see out here, there's this dark gray spot. Well, that's a slushy area. There's a lot of slush on the ice, and that can cause that ice to melt really fast. Even in just a couple days, it can melt when, uh, when there's slush on top of the ice. And I want to give you a close-up of this so you see what I'm talking about. Those are holes. Now those holes could have been caused from somebody throwing a rock in, they could have been caused from an old ice fishing hole, or they could have simply been caused from water running and eroding away the ice. But if you see around the center of that hole, it makes like a spider web. And those are essentially cracks that are going to get weaker and weaker. And if you were to step on that, you could easily fall through. That's what makes a spud so important when you're ice fishing, especially if you're on unsure ice. And all a spud is, is a steel rod. It could have a handle on one end, 
it's always nice to have a rope on it that you can secure around your wrist or you'll end up losing it through the ice and on the other end is just a wedge a steel wedge to bust holes in the ice and you can make one of those yourself or you can buy one for probably 10 bucks it's heavy a lot of guys don't like carrying it but it's, it really is a an important tool for ice fishing and uh, a lot of modern guys they they just don't uh, they don't realize the importance of that tool and why it was made you know it, it's not just for busting holes in the ice it's it's for checking the ice in front of you for spots like that because once it gets cold that slush is going to freeze and if we get a snow that snow is going to cover that up and you'll you'll never know it's there and as you're walking across the ice it's nice to thump that spud in front of you uh, to see if it's going to poke through the ice and if you look out if you can see out on this ice there's all kinds of gray spots I don't know if you can make it out in the video but there's a lot of those gray slushy spots that are going to get covered up with the next snow and it'll may wa make walking across there a bit treacherous if you don't have a way to test the ice in front of you and this is a fairly large lake this is the deepest section of the lake let me get you in closer this is the deepest section of the lake it gets about 38 feet deep right out there in the middle and this lake has a lot of shallow bays that rarely freeze over be I would think because of all the plant matter decaying plant matter creates heat and that keeps the water too warm for it to to freeze enough to be safe to fish on but since this area is away from the river channel which is out there where I came from and it's got this big ridge this big oak ridge to protect it from the wind and the sun and you know if you know anything about uh, navigation without a compass or whatever this is the afternoon so where that sun at is pretty much southwest because it's winter time the sun's gonna be in the southwest sky in the afternoon so this is a, a west ridge so it's protecting this from wind and it's protecting it from the afternoon sun which gives it a chance to freeze over and because that river channel the current doesn't flow up in here that's just an, an extra bonus for allowing it to freeze over before the rest of the lake does now the way this looks I could probably walk right out here and do some fishing but I haven't seen anybody out here I don't see a single footprint on the ice and there's nobody around you know if there was 10 guys out there I might risk walking out there to check the ice but I'm the only person here if I walk out there and fall in it would be entirely up to me to get myself out and back to shore and you know I don't care who you are if you think you're Mr. Survival that's a risky situation that you don't want to put yourself in I mean there's people that walk by here but these people don't know a thing about ice they don't know a thing about ice fishing and if they saw me out there struggling they would not come help me they may call 911 on their cell phone or iPod or whatever but it would probably be too late for me by then so I'm not going to risk it this water drops right off from shore immediately um, if I walk three feet out from shore I'm probably over my head in water and that, that's just not a good thing so I'm not going to chance it today I might go down here and beat on the ice from shore with my spud just to see I mean I have a good feeling that this ice is probably three to five inches thick right here Yeah, 
that's not thick enough for me. No way, no how. One inch of ice will support a man, but you have no way of knowing how thick that ice is. That right there is probably two, two to three inches thick, but it's not good ice. It's slushy. I mean, there's probably one inch of good ice and with all these cracks and uh, slushy depressions there's no way no way I'm going out there have at it but there's that big crack right there and I don't know if you can tell it in the video but that slush spreads out what looks like I mean, you can only see the really dark stuff, but it actually spreads out beyond that to about right there, which is probably 30 feet on each side of that uh, crack, and that's just no good. I mean, that right there, that just tells me that this is unsafe. I don't even need to step foot on the ice. I know it's unsafe. There's guys that'll do it, you know, and there's guys that fall in and, and freeze and drown. If you've ever fell in freezing water, um, you should know what it does to your body. It's not like in the TV shows, you know. When they do these fire drills and stuff, I see them come out here and they cut a 10 foot square hole in the ice and they drop a guy in and uh, they, they rescue him. But that guy is wearing protective clothing that protects him from that cold water. It freezes your body up. Your body doesn't function when it gets that cold. It's something to really keep in mind if, if you're a hiker or a hunter or a fisherman or somebody that just likes to get out and walk. You know, a lot of times you can say, you know, I can save a lot of time by cutting across this lake and then, uh, you know, next thing you know you're dead. Or you got some serious freeze issues that cause some problems for your body for the rest of your life. I've talked to enough old guys, you know, that have given me the experience that I don't need to experience it myself. I, uh, I haven't fell through the ice yet, and uh, hopefully I won't. There's a lifeguard station. Well, there's an ice rescue station right over there, but it's ill-equipped. Uh, the, the, there's not a long enough rope or equipment like uh, I don't know two by twelves or something to lay on the ice to give you some support to get out to somebody if they fell through um, you would be relying on you know walking off in the woods and hoping to find a long enough stick to reach out to somebody to pull them out of the ice because the last thing you want to do is is go to the edge of that ice to pull them out because then you'll be in too you'll be in the drink with them that's how a lot of people end up drowning a lot of the cases of ice drownings I've seen are where one person falls in and another person goes to rescue them and falls in and then that person is the one that ends up drowning or they both end up drowning and uh, it would be a quick way to go but it would not be a fun way to go not something I want to do I'll wait you know Hopefully the ice will freeze over and hopefully we'll, we'll get some good ice fishing. Yeah, this ice just isn't safe enough with that big crack running across the ice and fresh water coming up through that crack. I mean, that just tells me it's no good. That should be freezing over. That crack should be free, refreezing if the ice was safe. That tells me it's not freezing, it's actually thawing. Even though it's been below freezing for the past few days, 24 hours a day, the water must be too warm yet. But uh, one thing I've noticed, and I think a general rule of thumb is, you know, if you have below freezing temps 24 hours a day, 
and you have a coating of skim ice already, that ice can freeze at least a half inch in 24 hours. I've seen it freeze up to two inches or more in 24 hours, it just depends. But when you get snow on the ice like this, that insulates the water and the ice and it keeps it from freezing. That snow is actually a really good insulator and it'll keep that ice from freezing over. So we're probably in a bad situation as far as ice fishing here in southern Michigan because it's already mid-January and uh, we haven't had any good ice yet that I'm aware of. I mean there may be some small ponds or some little pockets somewhere that guys are fishing but as far as you know just generally speaking there's no good ice. I come out today with the spud hoping to uh, check the ice but really I don't trust it I don't trust going out there by myself with no one else around I mean I could probably pull myself out of the ice but you know probably is just not good enough fact is, you know, pulling yourself out of ice is only half the battle. Once you get out, you got to get warm. I think that's about it. I'm going to wrap it up and head on home. Talk to you later. Thanks for watching.